Go does have a, a keyword named var. And uh, you can use the var keyword to declare variables. And you can see here I'm declaring four variables using the keyword var. Um, and Go has a set of built-in types that you should be, that, that I would expect you to be familiar with from other programming languages that you've worked with, right? Int, string, float, bool, a couple things here. Uh, Go does have precision-based integers. We tend not to use them unless very specific APIs are asking for it. The question is then, you know, why do we want to use int and not be specific with that integer? Remember um, something here, Eric, uh, Eric, yeah, Eric, show me again. Remember um, something here, okay? If you think about any of the code you've ever written in your lifetime, whatever the language is, I don't care. When you think about it, your code only does three things, right? It allocates some memory. That's what a variable is doing. It's allocating some memory of some size and representation. You're then reading that memory and you're writing to that memory. I mean, basically, this is all you're doing. You're allocating reading and writing. But the funny thing is, I don't care what the type is, at the end of the day, especially on these machines that are in front of you, what you're really doing is just reading and writing integers all day. Everything boils back down to an integer or floating point number, especially if you're doing your GPU, ML kind of stuff, right? But everything kind of boils back down to an integer, an integer read and write. These are integer-based machines. And so if you're looking to have the most efficient code possible, then you want to make sure that you're working with the most efficient integer for the architecture that you're working for. And so this is why you're going to see a lot of code using just int. So the compiler can choose the most efficient integer size for the architecture that's in front of you. So we're going to be building and running a lot of code on AMD 64. That's our 64-bit architecture. That integer will be a 64-bit int. That's going to be the most efficient integer. So th that's the reason why I don't want you using precision-based integers until there's an API uh, that is specifically saying, I don't care what the architecture is. We're, we're locking ourselves into an integer of this size. All right, Eric, let's come back here. So you're going to see the use of int quite a bit in a lot of Go code, so we use that most efficient integer. But when it comes to floats, the language chose not to um, base anything on architecture. There, you have to choose a precision, whether it's 64 or 32. Most of the time, um, everybody uses that 64. Again, unless you have a really good reason to downgrade that float. And on a side note, the floating point numbers here in the compiler we're working with uh, is going to be based on IEEE 754, 754 binary decimals. So if you want to go down that rabbit hole, you could see what a, a binary decimal looks like in Go by looking at the IEEE 754 spec. And I got a blog post out there on some of that. Now, Go has another really, I think, I don't want to use the word interesting, I, I think cool um, concept, and it's called zero value. Eric, show me again. So Go focuses on integrity to a really high level. Integrity is an important part of Go's um, mantra as it relates to it. And one way Go gives you integrity is this concept of zero value. Now what zero value says is any value that is constructed in memory is going to be at its very least initialized to its zero value state. In other words, all of that memory that gets allocated, whether it's eight bytes, one byte, whatever it is, um, we're going to run electrons through the machine and set those bits to zero. So if you're allocating an integer and you don't specify a number for it, you're going to get the zero value of an int, which is zero. The memory gets initialized. Go writes the code for you behind the scenes to do that initialization. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of a performance loss there, but integrity has a higher role in Go um, in that particular case. So your float would be zero, your string would be empty, your bool would be false. Okay, so Eric, if you come back to the code, one of the, the guidelines that you're going to, and the idioms that I'm going to share with you is when you're declaring that variable and it's going to be starting in its zero value state. Notice I didn't say default, I said zero. 
then you're going to see me using var. I always use var to denote the zero value state uh, when I'm doing a, a variable construction here. And again, zero value for the int is zero. Strings are empty in Go when they're at their zero value. Bool in its zero value state would be false. Um, and so we're going to use var for zero value. Now, I don't want to get too heavy on line 20. These are things you can copy and paste, but Go, Go's fumped package, and you can see the print function here, took its, um, took its inspiration from the C programming language. And if you ever worked in C, C print functions use a lot of these types of uh, specifiers for things. So a couple of things just to note here. So when you start doing the exercises, um, you also won't be too confused, OK? There's basically going to be two functions that you'll use. You'll use printf for special formatting or print line, which will give you that carriage return line feed. All these are varadic functions, OK? So you can do some sort of messaging and then list as many things as you want afterwards, and they'll all be printed with a space behind it. There are times where you want to get very specific about how print formats things. Like this specifier here says, give me the type information for this variable, type, t type. V says, give me the base, give me the generic formatting that's defaulted inside the print function. Right? And that's an oh, easy way of you not having to say string or decimal. And so when you're doing these exercises and you wanted some sort of formatted string where you wanted to inject data inside this string, just, I mean, using percent %V will get you out of that right now instead of you worrying about, Bill, what is the percent for a byte? Bill, what is the percent for a? The, the, the V will do it for you. All right? And if you're not going to do any special formatting, just use the print line, and you can just list in an entire um, comma delimited set of values you want to print. So I don't want to get too crazy uh, over that in this class right now, but this will give you a good kind of idea of what to copy and paste. OK, but what if I don't want the zero value for something? What if I want to set it to like 10? So Go has a, a history. Um, if you look at Go's language history, it comes from a family of languages of C and Pascal and Al Gore, and it actually steals things from Smalltalk. And uh, it's really interesting what they stole from um, in terms of language design between now and the, uh, in the 60s. And this colon equals is something they, they took um, from like Pascal and Al Gore, I believe. And what it does is it's really a productivity operator. I don't want you using the word duct typing because it's not really, really accurate. What this says is um, declare and initialize at the same time. We call it the short variable declaration operator. I consider it a productivity operator. And I use it when we're not going to be setting something to its zero value state. So to kind of bring it a little bit closer here. Um, I'm using var for zero value because I'm not going to assign anything to it. If there is going to be an assignment, then I'll use that short variable declaration operator. And the compiler can look at this value and go, yep, that should be an int. Now, if I was doing a code review and I saw line 28 like this, it wouldn't be a problem if your shop or your project wants to use the zero value specifically during construction. There's nothing wrong with it as long as you're being consistent. But if it's a code base that I'm working on, I would tell you, no, let's convert line 28 to 27 to maintain the consistency in this particular guideline. Okay, So um, you're going to see the use of the short variable declaration operator when we're constructing something outside, outside of its zero value state. Now, there, there's one other interesting thing here, which is this syntax. And this is a conversion syntax. Now, in some languages that you've worked with before, you may have heard the, the concept of casting. And Go does have casting concepts. Usually, we're not going to do anything like that until we get into an unsafe mode. 
But what I'm showing you here is a casting syntax, which most languages use. And what these languages are trying to say with casting is, take the memory here, represented by the number 10, and let's pretend, let's pretend that it's really a int 32. The problem is that casting isn't really safe. Uh, there's been so many bugs due to casting that Go said, you know what, we're not going to do casting in this language. We're going to do conversion. And I want you to notice the parentheses aren't around the type information. They're around the value. It almost looks like a function call. And now what we would be saying is we're going to convert the value of 10 into an int32. And that's what AAA is going to be, an int32 value. So a lot of times when it comes to conversion, you're getting a new memory allocation. But again, what we're going after is integrity over, let's just say, more efficiency uh, with memory at this point. And there's ways to be more efficient. And when the compiler feels it can be efficient underneath the covers, it will. But I, I just want you to look at the, the difference here if you're used to something around casting. Now, if I run this code in the playground, you'll see here um, that we're getting basically the zero value for these variable declarations. And we're getting something other than zero value here. All right. So interesting stuff.